welcome to another episode of Kodo Cinema, the podcast show where I talk about movies. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, aka Kodo Man. Well, well, this is season five, episode nine. I mean, we're coming close to ten episodes in season five of Kodo Cinema. There is definitely a lot to talk about in this episode, so um, let's talk about the 95th Academy Awards. Now I'm pretty sure there's there's a ton of people who probably were probably not aware that the 95th Academy Awards that the 95th Academy Awards were on. I mean that's okay. I mean because the the Academy Awards have been in decline recently ever since, like particularly like in the in the 2010s, like in the mid to late 2010s, also the 2020s as well. The start of the 2020s, I should say. But uh, with that being said, um, with with that being said, that the ninety fifth Academy Awards garnered eighteen point seven million views, which it, which actually makes it the third least viewed show for the ninety fifth Academy Awards. So yeah, so yeah, that's something. And of course, the Academy Awards went for went through a runtime of three hours and forty minutes. Plus, the, the Academy Awards for the 95th Academy Awards was hosted by Ricky Gervais for the first time since he hosted the Oscars, I should say, back in 2017 and 2018, respectively. Now, the films that took home the Oscars, which is basically Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which led the ceremony with 11 nominations and won a leading seven awards, including Best Picture. Other winners included... All Quiet on the Western Front with four Academy Awards, and The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser, with two wins. Other films that took home one Academy Award, which other 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 films that took home took home one Academy Award went to Top Gun Maverick, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Avatar The Way of Water, Women Talking, RRR, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, and Navani. As for the short films, the short film winners includes An Irish Goodbye, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse, and The Elephant Whisperers. So there are your um, there are your winners right here for the films that won Oscars. But what film categories did did all these films win in? Well, let me, well, I will dive into that soon, but first, let me give in a little bit of a of a background for some of these films. The Best Picture category featured two sequels, Avatar The Way of Water and Top Gun Maverick, and it was the first time for Best Picture categories to feature two sequels, which was, as I mentioned, Avatar The Way of Water and Top Gun Maverick, as well as the first time two films grossing over $1 billion worldwide were nominated for Best Picture in the same year. All Quiet on the Western Front's nine nominations trailed only Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which came out in 2000 and Roma, which came out in 2018, for the most nominations by a film not in English language. The Quiet Girl was the first submission from Ireland to receive a nomination for Best International Feature Film. There were 16 first-time nominees across the four acting categories, including all five Best Actor nominees, the most in Oscar history. Michelle Yeoh was the first woman who identifies as, as Asian. Michelle Yeoh, the first woman who identifies as as an as an Asian, she was nominated for Best Actress. A record for Asian actors received acting nominations, including Hong Chao, Stephanie Hsu, and and winners Ki He Kwan and Yeoh. With her Best Supporting Actress nomination for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, Angela Bassett became the first person to receive an acting nomination for a role in a film based on Marvel Comics. Judd Hirsch, nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his role in The Fableman, set a new record for longest gap between two acting nominations following his nomination for Ordinary People, which came out in 1980. And at the age of 90, John Williams is the oldest competitive nominee in Oscar history with his 53rd Oscar nomination, breaking his own record as the most Oscar-nominated living person and the second most nominated person of all time, behind Walt Disney. Also, filmmaker Alfonso Cuaron, very well known for Roma, and of course Gravity, became the second 
person to be nominated in seven different categories for his live action short film Le Pupil and and it was also nominated for uh, be- for for best live action short film he he is the second person to be nominated in seven different categories following Kenneth Branagh plus Le, Le Pupil is also the first Disney plus live action short film to be nominated for an Oscar so yeah, now the films. Now the main film that won Best Picture, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, became the first film since 2013's Gravity to win seven Academy Awards and the most awarded Best Picture winner since 2008's Slumdog Millionaire. Plus, it is, it is the third film in history to win in three acting categories, following a streetcar named Desire and Network. Eight, studio A24 won nine awards, more than any other studio or distributor with Everything Everywhere All at Once and The Whale. The studio was the first to win seven of the eight top awards, Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and the four acting awards, missing only Best Adapted Screenplay. The Fablemans became the first English-language Toronto International Film Festival People's Choice Award People's Choice Award winner to lose all of his Oscars since David Cronenberg's Eastern Promises, which came out in 2007, and the first Steven Spielberg film to be shot out since Ready Player One. Wow. I mean, that is competition right there. Yep. So anyway, let's jump into the film categories. So... Starting with Best Picture, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, uh, won Best Picture, and the winners, the not the people who were nominated, da- the two Daniels, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, and Jonathan Wang, won Best Picture for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, BD Out, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Ian Sheeran, Elvis, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness and Women Talking. So yeah, so yeah, yep, that's it right there. Also, may I? I also want to mention that Harris actor Harrison Ford announced the the winner of best the best picture winner, which was Everything Everywhere All at Once. And and the thing was Harrison Ford. For for those of you who may or not may or may not know, Harrison Ford collaborated alongside Kihi Kwan for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, to which Everything Everywhere Everything Everywhere All at Once was Kihi Kwan's first film in a one of his, one of his first films in a long time for an acting role. Because uh, because of the because if you if you watched it if you've seen the, the show, you get a very nice little reunion between the two actors. Sure, yes, they did it before with the Golden Globes, but for the Oscars it was also heartwarming too. Because you could definitely you you definitely hear a bit of a glimpse of Kihi Kwan saying, Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones, we won, we won. It's just so heartwarming too. Also the fact that Steven Spielberg and his wife, Kate Capshaw, Kate Capshaw played uh Willie in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, to which Kate Capshaw is the wife to Steven Spielberg now, were all at the at the ninety fifth Academy Awards. So technically this was an Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom reunion for for the for the three for the three cast mem- three main cast members so that was definitely something now moving forward to best director that went to everything everywhere all at once for daniel kwan and daniel scheinert beating out martin mcdonald for the banshees of Inna sheeran steven spielberg for the fablemans todd field for tar and ruben Oslin for triangle of sadness now moving forward to the acting categories, starting with Best Actor. Now, the winner for Best Actor went to Brendan Fraser for The Whale. And I will say this, uh, this, this was a tough competition because, um, because this is Brendan Fraser's first Oscar nomination. The same could be said with Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Paul Mesca, and Bill Nye. These are first time nominees getting get, getting getting nominated for an Oscar and Brendan Fraser took home the win. And from from my point of view, I thought Austin Butler was going to win. I mean, it was a tough competition because Austin Butler 
was going up against some heavy giants, most notably Colin Farrell and Bill Nye. Brendan Fraser on one hand, I mean, I guess you can make an argument about that, but at the very end of the day, Brendan Fraser won the award, and and rightfully so, because Brendan Fraser had a hu huge career struggle in the late 2000s going into the 2010s. I mean, that's not to say he found acting roles he here and there, I mean, to which he did, but it was more like in TV, TV and other, other films. Plus, in the late two, two, in the late twenty tens, he was able to find find the ladder to climb and climb himself back up to the acting acting roles, which he did pretty well with. But the whale, the whale is a redemption for for Brendan Fraser. Now, I have not seen the whale, although although from what I heard, he did a fantastic job in in that film. And and of course, going to Elvis, Austin Butler did a fantastic job playing Elvis Presley in the Elvis biopic. I mean, he he did so too. But at the very end of the day, you gotta give Brendan Fraser credit because he did a fantastic job, a career resurgence for Brendan Fraser right there. Now moving forward to Best Actress, the Best Actress winner went went to Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once, and. This was her first. This is also her first acting win too for Best Actress at the 95th Academy Awards. I mean, Michelle Yeoh for the, many of the martial arts films, plus other Hollywood films including Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Kung Fu Panda 2, Minions: The Rise of Gru, including The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, and many other films as well, including Shang Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, those are some of the films that I remember seeing Michelle Yeoh in. But I know there were definitely other films that came out before before that, so that's just my that's just my that's just my own my own point of view. But Michelle Yeoh, for what I, for what I heard in Everything Everywhere All at Once, she did a fantastic. I heard she did a fantastic job, and I mean she did a fantastic job, and rightly so. She won the award. She she beat out Anna De Armas for Blonde, Kate Blanchett for Tar. Andrea Risenborough for To Leslie and Michelle Williams for The Fablemans. Now, to, now I'm gonna be honest with you. I had Kate Blanchett win, winning for Tar because because um, I thought her performance in Tar was good. I only saw it through through some clips of Tar because because obviously I wasn't able to see the film because you know there are definitely some films that were nominated for the for an Oscar have very limited re releases very limited releases but i didn't know about this film until i saw a trailer and i thought her performance in in, in that trailer from the trailer clips i thought were was very good including other clips that came out i thought Kate blanchett's performance was very good so i thought she might win the oscar for best actress but at the end of the day i thought michelle yeo won did a pretty good job with her role and everything everything everywhere all at once for best actress so yep now moving forward to best supporting actor, and the winner for that one went to Kihi Kwan. I've already mentioned Kihi Kwan and Harrison Ford at the Oscars for best, basically for best picture. The like Kihi Kwan, for what I heard, he deserved that award. Now I'm gonna have to confess right here. I I have not seen everything everywhere all at once. I mean, I heard a lot of great things about that film. I'm saying this to confess right now, but. But for what is for for what it's worth, from that film and from pe and the people who have seen this film, I mean I could definitely believe that because everything everywhere all at once is a multiversal film. Like you're traveling into the multiverse of some sorts. And for Ki He Kwan in a supporting acting role, he did. For what I heard, he did a fantastic job. And this is one of Ki He Kwan's first ever acting roles in a long time plus he still collaborates with with uh with jeff with actor jeff cohen jeff cohen was one of the was one of the he played one of the he played uh chunk he played chunk in the goonies jeff cohen jeff cohen started out as a, a child actor but moved on to become to become a a lawyer an attorney i should say he became an attorney 
and Jeff Cohen helped Kihi Kwan get back into Hollywood, to which, um, to, to which uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once was one of the films that he was able to get Kihi Kwan back into Hollywood. So that was a pretty good move between the two between the two co-stars, and I really liked it. The two co-stars from the Goonies. That was pretty good. And uh, this was Kihi Kwan's first. Uh, Oscar win and Oscar nomination, beating out Brendan Gleeson for The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Brian Tyree Henry for, Cause for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, and Barry Keoghan for The Banshees of Inner Sheeran. So, it, so, moving forward to Best Supporting Actress, it is basically, yeah, basically, be, moving on, moving forward to Best Supporting Actress, the winner for Best Supporting Actress, went to Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now, like I said, Everything Everywhere Everything Everywhere All at Once won seven Oscars. And that's, that, that includes some of the acting categories, too. Jamie Lee Curtis also went up against another actress for Everything Everywhere All at Once, and that is Stephanie Hsu. She was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress as well, but they gave it, gave it to Jamie Lee Curtis, be, beating out, uh, like I mentioned, Stephanie Stephanie Sue for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Irishun, Hong Chao for The Whale, and Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, um, just to go off topic for a moment, I, in in one of my in one of my previous episodes I did where I where I also talked about the Oscars, I also had Angela Bassett winning for Best Supporting Actress because. Um, because I watched uh, Black Panther for Wakanda Forever, and I thought her performance in that film as a Best Supporting Actress, I thought she was very good in that film. Now, say what you will about Black Panther for Wakanda Forever. I mean, it was a hard film to get through because, because most notably the passing of Chadwick Boseman, and of course, like rewriting the entire story around. But ma mainly the drama basically mainly the drama for um the, the basically the drama the, the the drama sets the tone for the film it was the highlight of black panther wakanda forever and angela bassett brings in a lot of drama to her role and she does a fantastic job playing queen Ramonda for black panther wakanda forever and and i will say this even though she didn't win she she got the recognition she deserves and and she rightfully so she rightfully and rightfully so i mean i wish she could have won but at the end of the day i mean hey it is what it, it is what it is i know it, i know it can be it can be tough to you know that to know that your prediction it to know that the prediction was wrong but at the end of the day i mean hey but hey angela bassett deserved the recognition she she got the same could be said with Austin Butler for best actor. So yeah, so yeah. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis won for Everything Everywhere All at Once. But hey, you got to give these actors and actresses credit. They did a fantastic job for these roles. I mean, I will say that. I will say it. In my own personal opinion, I think Jamie Lee Curtis got the got the got the got the win for best supporting actress. And Angela Bassett. Hey. She did a fantastic job. I thought she was going to win, but you know, hey, you know, hey, my prediction was wrong. So, yeah, so yeah. But anyway, shout out to all the actors and actresses for 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 their role for their nominated roles. Shout out to these actor actors and actresses. They did a fantastic job with these films that they all they have all acted in. Okay. Moving forward to best original screenplay. The best original screenplay went to Everything Everywhere All at Once, basically the two Daniels themselves, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. Beating out Martin McDonagh for The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, The Fablemans, being written by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner, Tar for Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Oslin for Triangle of Sadness. Now moving forward to Best Adapted Screenplay, Women Talking won for Best Adapted Screenplay for Sarah Polly. And it was based on the novel by Mary by Marianne Tolles. So, and it beat out All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion on Ives Out Mystery, Li Living, and Top Gun Maverick. Now, moving forward to Best Animated Feature Film. Now, 
I'm just going to say this right now. Best animated feature film was the first category of the night. So just to let you all know about that. So the winner for best animated feature film went to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. And this was Guillermo del Toro's third Oscar win since he won two Academy Awards at the 20 at the 2018 Oscars for The Shape of Water as as a producer and a director. And so, yeah, and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, I heard a lot of great things about that film. I've seen some clips where the stop motion animation for the film was very good and I and I think and I believe that film deserved the win. And it beat out Marcel the Shell with shoes on Puss and Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Now, I was predicting Puss and Boots The Last Wish was going to win since it had that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse feel because of the animation. Plus, the story was very good, too. I liked the, sto I liked the story and the return to the Shrek franchise. But uh, at the end of the day, Guillermo del Toro took home the win for Pinocchio. What's also crazy the fact that we had there were there were there were there were also two other Pinocchio films that came out. One that featured Pauly Shore and the other one from Walt Disney and Robert Zemeckis, the live action remake that it is. And of course, the Pinocchio cameo in Puss and Boots the Last Wish. So that was so we that was pretty pretty meta because you have two other films, two other Pinocchio films that came out the same, the same year as Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and a Pinocchio cameo in Pusa Boost Last Wish. All right. Now, Turning Red, Turning Red was nominated for Best Animated Feature Film, which came from Pixar. Now, I will say this, but what I heard about Turning Red, and I, I have seen Turning Red as well, Turning Red, what, Turning Red was an okay film. It had a lot of energy, but, but the story... The story was the story wasn't great. It wasn't that great in my own personal opinion. I mean, it could have been better. It did have the film did have a lot of energy to it, but at the very end, the story wasn't that wasn't that great for Turning Red. And I was worried at one point because uh, because when it comes to like Disney animated films, they always go for the best animated feature film for the Oscars. But I, but this time around. Um, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio took home that win. And also, and also, Guillermo del Toro brought up in his acceptance speech, which was the very first acceptance speech of the night for the for, for best best animated feature film. He said he mentioned that animation is cinema. And for what he for what he said about that, I can relate to that because animation is not just for kids it's not just for kids because yeah i mean the animation nowadays you may see it as more of a thing for kids but you when you really think about it it does have an adult feel to it so and and that could that could also explain so much for cinema and i and to quote guillermo del toro on this animation is cinema animation is not just a genre for kids and I can believe I can believe that I believe in him saying that quote because you think because you think animation is just for kids because Bob Chapek the uh, one of the uh, one of the C one of the, one of the few CEOs at Disney at the time um, mentioned that he believed that animation was just for kids. No, it's not just for kids. And look, I can understand animation being 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 more like morally for more like for kids. And look, I can understand that from for from a different point of view. But when you think about animation, not just in kids' movies, but you look at other adult animated films, even TV shows as well. Animation has a has a animation is is told not just for kids, but also for adults as well. So so both both animation can be good for kids and adults, even cinema as well. Look at Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Even though it feels like a kid's film, but at the same time, it does have more of an adult edge to it. Coraline, a stop-motion animated film, may look like it was made for kids, but it had an adult feel to it. P Pinocchio, 
Pinocchio, the, the, the stop motion Pinocchio film that Guillermo del Toro did. I mean, it may look, it may be something of a kid's film, but it had more of, of a serious adult edge to it. So, say that, say, I mean, you can definitely say it as it will. Okay, let's say it, say, okay, say what you will about the animation. Oh, animation is just only for kids. But here's the thing. Animation alone is cinema. And I agree to that in my personal opinion. I mean, if you have a different opinion about animation being cinema, comment below. F please comment below and let me know your thoughts about that. Okay? So, yeah. So, anyway, I just want to throw that out there. So, let's move forward. So, let's move forward to Best International Feature Film. And the winner for Best International Feature Film went to All Quiet on the Western Front, which was directed by Edward Berg Berger for Germany. And uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, I've seen the first 10 to 20 minutes of the film. And from the first 10 to 20 minutes of the film, I thought it was pretty good. It looked, it actually looked pretty good. Although I didn't watch the whole, the whole film because, I mean, I, I had to, because I, because it was played late at night and I had to go to work the next day. So, yeah. But other than that, All Quiet on the Western Front took home the Oscar for Best International Feature Film, beating out Argentina 1985 for a country of Argentina, Close for, Bel for Belgium, EO for Poland, and The Quiet Girl for Ireland. Now, moving forward, Best Documentary Feature went to Navalny, and it, it beat out All That Breathes, All the Beauty and Bloodshed, Fire of Love, and a house made of splinters. For best documentary sh short subject, the elephant whispers took home the win. BD out, haul out. How do you measure a year? The Martha Mitchell effect and Stranger at the Gate. So now, best live action short film. It went to an Irish goodbye. Beating out Va Valu, Le, Le Pupo, Night Ride, and the Red Suitcase. Best animated short film went to The Boy, The Bull, The Fox, and The Horse, Beady Out, The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, and that is the, actually the title of the film, My Year of Dicks. That's the title of the film, just to let you all know. I'm not making this up. This is it. This is this is it. the actual title of the film. I'm not making that up, just to let you know. Not making that up. And of course, the an ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I believe it. Almost sounds like a tongue tongue twister. Try saying that five times. An ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I believe it. An ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I believe it. An ostrich told the, me the world is fake, and I believe it. An ostrich told me the world is fake, and I believe it. An ostrich told me the world is fake, and I believe it. Wow, that was pretty tough on my part. But anyway, moving forward. Moving forward to Best Original Score. Now, Best Original Score went to All Quiet on the Western Front. And composer Volker Bertelmann won Best Original Score for All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, I didn't know... Now, I didn't know what film was going to win Best Original Score because All Quiet on the Western Front wasn't the only nomination. Babylon by Justin Her Hurwitz was also nominated. Queen the Banshees of Ian Sheeran from Carter Burwell, Everything Everywhere All at Once for Saul Lux, and John Williams for The Fableman. So I had no idea which composer was going to win Best Original Score. However, for what I, for when I saw that Volker Bertelmann won Best Original Score, I immediately went onto YouTube to listen to the main theme, and. Boy, oh boy, wasn't that theme something? It was, it was an intense theme, and I can definitely see why it won that award. So yeah, and now moving on to the next song category. Now moving forward to the next music category, best original song, "Not To Not To" from Triple R, <laughs> or R R R, won best original song, and this was written by, written and composed by M M. Kiravani and and Chandra Bose Be beating out applause from Tell Like a Woman, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, which had the the music and lyrics by Lady Gaga and Blood Pop, Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever with Rihanna, Ryan Coogler, and Ludwig Gorson with lyrics by Thames and Ryan Coogler, 
And this is a live from Everything Everywhere All at Once with the music by Ryan Lott, David Byrne, David Byrne, and Mitski. With lyrics by Ryan Lott and David Byrne. Also, since I mentioned Lady Gaga, Hold My Hand for Top Gun Maverick, she was a she was not supposed to perform at the Oscars originally because she was working on the Joker sequel with Joaquin Phoenix. However, it was later revealed that uh, there was a change of plans and Lady Gaga was able to perform at the 95th Academy Awards for to and to perform Hold My Hand for Top, uh, Top Gun Maverick. So I guess that, that was something. So I guess that's a plus right there for the Oscars and, you know, re, 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 reworking your schedule. So that that's something. Yeah. Now moving forward to Best Sound. Best Sound went to Top Gun Maverick. And it beat out All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, and Elvis. Now Top Gun Maverick, I love Top Gun Maverick. That was a fantastic film. One of the best films to come out of 2022. Now, I wasn't really sure if it was going to win for any of the Oscar categories, despite being nominated, but at the end, it took home best sound. And let's be honest, I love the sound of that film. Am I right, folks? All right, moving forward to best production design. And it went to All Quiet on the Western Front, beating out Avatar The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablements. Now, moving forward to Best Cinematography. Best Cinematography went to All Quiet on the Western Front for, for Jane's Friend, being, being out Bardo, False Chronicle of Handful of Truths, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. Moving forward to Best Makeup and Hairstyling. The Whale took home Best Makeup and Hairstyling, being out The Batman, All Quiet on the Western Front, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Elvis. I'm pretty sure Elvis was the one where they turned uh, Tom Hanks into Colonel Tom Parker, which I'm pretty sure was one of the uh, was one of the makeup designs. But uh, but also the fact maybe Elvis as well. So yeah. Now moving forward to best costume design, best costume design went to Black Panther: Wakanda Forever for Ruthie Carter, BD out Babylon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. So yeah, now also this is Ruth E. Carter's second Oscar win for Black Pan for for a Marvel film, most notably the Black Panther films, because she did the first Black Panther film too, and she won an Academy Award for best for best costume design for the first Black Panther film, and now the second Black Panther film. So that's a that's actually a pretty pretty nice track re track record. So moving forward to Best Film Editing, and that went to Everything Everywhere All at Once, beating out The Banshees of Ian Sheeran, Elvis, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. And now, the last category, Best Visual Effects. Now, Best Visual Effects, in my opinion, is a tough competition because, because, because of the uh, superhero genre, like DC and Marvel, very well known for their visual effects, and they do get Oscar nominations. However, they don't usually win a ton of visual effects awards, which is something that the Academy literally overlooks. The winner for Best Visual Effects went to Avatar The Way of Water, beating out Black Panther Wakanda Forever, The Batman, All Quiet on the Western Front, and Top Gun Maverick. So, yeah, that's that's basically it. That, anyway, that is basically it. Also, you got the, also you got the Academy Honorary Awards, which went to Diane War, Yuzan Palsi, and Peter Wurr. and the Jean Herschel Humanitarian Award went to Michael Michael J. Fox. And speaking of Diane Warren, Diane Warren is was also nominated for Best Original Song for for her film for her film for her film for her film Tell It Like a Woman. And she was nominated for Best Original Song, although, you know, Diane Warren didn't win. But she, she did win an Academy Honorary Award. So, I guess that's something, too. 
So anyway, uh, were there any incidents at the Oscars? Well, we did get to see well, we did get to see a funny moment from the Cocaine Bear and Elizabeth Banks because Cocaine Bear was in theaters, so there's definitely something. And also Jimmy Kimmel poking fun of the Will Smith slap because for those of you who may or may not know, the Will Smith slap happened last year when Chris Rock made a joke about uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife. And Chris Rock sees Jada Pinkett Smith because uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's got a, got a bald, has a uh, bald head. Alopecia is a um, is a spot baldness, a condition a a condition for um, hair hair loss. Chris Rock made a joke in front in front of in front of Will Smith's wife saying, "Jada, I love you. GI Jane 2, can't wait to see it." That's what he said, and here's the thing. It, uh, yeah, so yeah, and look, listen, I know it's referencing G.I. Jane because, uh, uh, I know it references G.I. Jane because, uh, Demi Moore, Demi Moore actually sh- ha- shaved her, ha- shaved her head, and of course, basically, she, because in the army, in the army, because in the army, you gotta, sh- you have to shave it. It's basically in the army, one of the main things in the army is basically bald head, shaved, a shaved head, so that kind of, kind of makes sense. To put in that reference, although Will Smith laughed at the joke, Jada did not. But this is where the Will Smith slap comes in because Will Smith walks up on stage and slaps. And for those of you who are saying it's staged, it's not. I, it's not even staged. It's live television. He did it live on live TV. So how are you telling me? So you're telling me this is staged? Last year was staged. Not a not a chance. I mean because now. You're hearing that Will. You're now hearing more more stories about this Will Smith incident, and let's be honest, Will Smith has become a butt of a joke or a slap of a joke, I should say. He's getting slapped everywhere with memes and jokes about this whole incident. Even Chris Rock himself even even pointed that out in his uh, in his stand up comedy documentary that he did for Netflix. So yeah, so yeah, that so yeah, and listen and listen, I know. I know it sounds like the story is pretty old. The whole Will Smith slapping incident is sounds pretty old. But listen, it's not going to stop. That whole story and incident is not going to stop. And it really it, it really tarnished Will Smith's reputation as an actor. I mean, he he is now banned from the Oscars since uh since since his 2022 incident with Chris Rock at the 94th Academy Awards. And which is probably why Jimmy Kimmel made made references and jokes about this. So yeah, but anyway, anyway, um, the Oscars overall, I thought it was slightly better than last year because because I, because last the last couple of years with the Oscars were more on the political side of things, like in the in the in the acceptance speeches that many people s- said they they put in like 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 political tools like political identity politics into their um uh, into their speech into their acceptance speeches but remember when J- remember when ricky gervais gervais said at the 2020 golden globes like remember what he said at the 2020 golden globes like like if you win an award if you win an award just go go on stage and think and think and thank your thank your agent thank your lord thank your lord and and go right off stage don't use this as a, don't use this acceptance speech as a political tool. You know nothing about the real world. I mean, from what Ricky Gervais said, is it, I I can I can agree with him on that. I agree with him because because I I mean why 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 say something political in an acceptance speech of of a win of a win? Like you could just go on if you win, go on stage, tell them how honored honored you are to win this award. Thank, thank, thank your cast and crew members. Thank the directors. Thank the academy, and then, and then just walk right on stage. I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Don't use the acceptance speech as a political tool. I mean, I mean, Ricky Gervais said it best. I mean, I'm just, I just don't. I'm, mean, I'm just tired of hearing politics being put into a political. I'm, I'm just tired of, of hearing politics being put into acceptance speech. I mean, there were definitely a couple of times at this year's Oscars where you hear a couple of, of acceptance speeches where it did get 
political at some points, but but I think I think in my opinion the best acceptance speech in my opinion came for Guillermo del Toro for the animation is cinema. That was in my personal opinion the best acceptance speech that I have ever heard from the Oscars. From this year's Oscars in my personal opinion. So, yeah. That's just my that's just my opinion on this, okay? But I'm pretty sure everybody's going to have a different opinion and that's that's totally fine. But anyway, that's that's it right that's it right here for th for this uh, episode. Um what do you all think of the 95th Academy Awards? Did you think the the Academy Awards this year was okay? Did you think it was better than last couple of years? Did you think it was worse than than before? I mean, let me know let me know your thoughts. I mean, I would like to hear your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about it. So, anyway, thank you all for tuning in to Kodo Cinema. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, aka Kodo Man. Remember to watch movies and stay positive.